The Chauncey Hayden Show is sponsored by Hover.com. Domain names made simple. Go to gfq.hover.com and get 10% off your entire purchase. And by Stitcher Radio. Listen on the go via the Stitcher mobile app. For more information, go to stitcher.com slash gfq. Location provided by Sapphire New York. Visit them at nysapphire.com. You think you have me all down. You think me at me. I will always be one step ahead. Don't hurt me for real. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, look at her teeth. No, she has fangs. I'm not even kidding. Ah! 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 Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Are you insane? He to get bit. Hey everybody, welcome to the Chauncey Hayden Show, uh, broadcasting from the Sapphire Gentlemen's Club in New York City. We're with special guest, a, a, a really special guest, Pat Cooper. Thank you, Chauncey. I'm Pat happy Cooper to be the, here again. And we last were just, time I was here, what, three years ago? Three years ago. Said I was here. Last time you saw a girl, three years ago. <laughs> the last time you were here. Um, oh, I loved it here. It was so exclusive. It, it took was us darker th- last time. It was, was darker. Here. Yeah, this is. Now you're paying the electricity, right? We're, we're making money now. But no, Pat, you're a legend. We were just talking about pop culture and pop icons. You are a pop icon in comedy. Thank you. You, you wrote a book called I, How Dare You Say How Dare Me. Right. Okay? It's not just your average book that you read today. It's really, and I don't want to use this word loosely, but it's a tell-all. It kind of is. You, you really let it fly. You don't hold back, but you never did. In your act, in, in your personal life, you told people how you felt. And you do it in this book, and I give you credit for it. Well, it's a good book. Again, I tell you, um, I spent many hours with Steve Guerin in his office, and um, then when he said, okay, we're finished, and then I said, now what? He said, well, now we leave it at me. And I left it there, and then he put it in. Steve, Steve is the, co- the one who recorded your voice and wrote down the words to capture what you were saying. And I, when I read it, I said, she said, had a rhythm. Because I'm a degenerate for people who should have a rhythm, like comics. And ri- also Rich, uh, I can't even say his name. Hirschlock. Hirschlock. Yeah, okay. Rich Hirschlock. And um, they gave it a, well, that's what, they gave it a rhythm. And when you give somebody a rhythm, like I think my comedy on the stage has right. a rhythm. And I see a lot of comics that are wonderful, but don't have a rhythm, don't have a, 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 a nice way. It's like uh, they get on one subject and that's it. So the, the book, it, it's a tell-all. It, it tells your life the way you experienced it, the way you tell your comedy. It's the same way. It, it doesn't hold back. It doesn't, doesn't pull punches. You let it fly. You, you talk about Howard Stern. You talk about your family. You talk about your ex-manager who stole money from you. You talk about the, the emotions in your life that make you cry when you read the book. The, th- the things that you experienced. Your wife. It, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I'll tell you how I looked at it in a, in a positive way because I had that woman for about 44 years. And um, I got married... That was my sec marriage, my, and I'm not putting down my first wife. This poor woman was dictated by her. She was the baby of the family. She was dictated by her family and didn't understand my, 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 my comedy, that I wanted to be a comic. And let me tell you about Italians. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you go to work. Friday night, you get paid. Saturday, you go shopping. Sunday, you eat macaroni. And now Monday comes, and you do the same thing for the rest of your life. <laughs> I stepped out of that, right. and they thought I was a retard because, see, today we have DNA. Now, what my father was trying to figure out, how are you in this family <laughs> when you don't talk like us? You have none of I said, what are you, why do you all keep opening your mouth I said, it's comedy, for Christ's sake. What's but you didn't start you? until you were in your early 30s. You, start, you, started, you started in I showbiz. I did it before that. But you really didn't, you didn't hit until later I in life. I got lucky meeting a man called Willie Weber, who was turned w- around. He's an agent. He was very close with Jackie Gleason. He used to handle Gla- all, right, the, right. all the comics, you know, and he saw me. He said, you listen to me. I'm going to put you on Gleason. I said, this guy's going to be nuts. So I said, okay. Eight months later, I was on Gleason. And, and, and I said, then when I, I went on Gleason, it upset my family 
because they says you got successful to embarrass us. I says, what are you crazy? And you because been... they always called me dumb. There's something wrong with this guy. My father sent me to the doctor to put the stethoscope on his head. They say that about every every creative person is called retarded or dumb. Right. But it's the creativity, the showbiz in you that people don't understand. They can't understand it. It's been in you your whole life. Well, Italians were not known to have a sense of humor. Yeah. They sued me when I went on Greece and saying I'm disrespectful to my culture. I said, no, I'm showing my culture that we have a sense of humor. You gosh damn people nuts. When I made the record, they said, well, you're talking about stuff. You're making a fool of me. I says, no, I'm opening my mouth about my culture. We like to laugh, but we're afraid to because our fathers and mothers shut up and eat. Shut up and go to work. So but, that was it. But you know what makes it, your story <clears throat> interesting, Pat? You've always been very honest about your life, about the experiences, the people in your life, yet you've been hurt by it because it hurts you, right? It hurts you in show business. Well, they people, thought I was disrespectful but, when I got I, when I left my family because, and I tell you, they said, well, you know, those are your kids. I said, well, she kept telling me that. Those are my kids. Are kids. And I'm not going to be funny. I'm, not, I'm saying, what am I going to do? If I stay here, I'm dead. So I said, they're your kids, and I left. And I went to court <laughs> when, when I did Gleason, they wanted a million dollars a year. So I showed the, the, the judge the... Uh, the, they uh, sued, the your family sued you for doing Jackie Gleason and talking no, about No, they were suing me because, you know, he's not supporting his kids. I said, I am supporting my kids, I said. So the judge says, what are you here for? She says, well, he's a millionaire now. I did Jackie Gleason, I showed the, the, uh, the contract, right. $600, I said. So the judge knew that she didn't know, and then her sisters were in the courtroom busting my balls. <laughs> and finally the judge says, you know, back off. You're not going to get that. And the most she ever got, I swear to you, I don't lie to you. And all this problem of 30 years I'm married, the most she got a week was $135. And I paid the uh, medical, and I said to her, because you got a big mouth, you're so stupid, don't tell me I want the docket number. I want to know just send me the check. Now, a very fast story. I don't know if it's in there. One day, she got the check late. That's not that she's... She didn't know. Your first she has wife. A, a war yeah, she has a warrant for my arrest. So my lawyer calls up. He says, get up the street. There's a warrant for non-support. I says, for $135. I wouldn't support her. You nuts. <laughs> we found out there was a girl called Pat Cooper in the boys of Syracuse. And we said, we found out and we went to the studio and she come over and gave me the, uh, the, uh, the, the thing that she's supposed to give me, whatever, what do you call it? <laughs> Subpoena. Subpoena. And I says, your name is, she says, I'm Pat Cooper. I said, are you kidding me? She says, no. <laughs> the guy put it in her mailbox and I says, you can't make this up. So we go to court. <laughs> right. And when the judge says, well, Pat Cooper stand, we both stood. <laughs> and he says, is this a joke? And she says, your honor, I'm with the boys from Syracuse. And they put the, and the guy that's supposed to subpoena me lied. He said he handed it to me. Now you want to know if the shit hit the fan. But, but the your whole, judge said I can't believe this, and I didn't believe it. Your whole life has been controversial <clears throat> like this. I don't know how you've lived this long without getting a heart attack with all the controversy that's always pending over you all the time. Problems with with agents. Problems with Howard Stern. You talk about Howard Stern in the book. That may that be honest, Pat. That period where you were on the Howard Stern show. It was a winner. It was a win. It, it, it oh, made, I never made, denied it that. did your career. Yeah, but you got to understand. Is this real water? <laughs> you got to understand. Right. If you look and hear those things I've done with him, I never succumbed to his nonsense. And I always said what was on my mind. And I know he really liked me. I'll go to the back right there. He's wondering why all of a sudden I turned on him. And I says, because you're now telling people you were never Howard Stern, now you're another Howard Stern. I say, you want the truth? You're a fucking bully. You made money by being a bully. So be a mensch and don't come around and try to tell people you changed. I said, when you're born a dog, you can't die a cat, Howard. So cut the crap. He said, what did I ever do for you? I says, you tell what you did to me? What? You're trying to tell me you never existed, that I'm a fucking liar that I did your show. I don't want you on my show no more. Who gives a shit? When did you become a, you know, a dictator? All right, but let me ask you, because you talk about it in the book. If you would have said nothing about Howard Stern and just kept the act about your family, you'd still be doing that show today. Do you ever regret saying, 
saying, I should have shut up and maybe never say anything about Howard and I'd still be doing the show. Or you felt passionate enough. Like you had to tell this guy that he was full of shit and, and you felt like you had to do it. I want him to be a man. Stand up. I said, here, you turn around, you double cross your, all your fans. Right. Now they got to pay $12 to hear the same shit that we're doing for nothing. I said, you're out of order. Right. And I'm not doing my show. Who gives a shit? He I gotta do your show, and then now he plays it continuously on radio. Because it's brilliant radio. It was brilliant radio. But and then your family, can, the show where your family, my called, mother, your mother, your daughter. <laughs> that's and your dynamite. Son. I never regretted that because he asked me. That's it's documented. He says you want to talk your mother's under, put her on. And that's he looked right. at me. I ain't hiding nobody. You want something? How did, how did they? How did they get your mother's phone number? They Wait called in. They in called. The they heard the show. They, they called, called in. The Excuse me. Is he in the show? He. I don't know. Is he, he's is not he in trouble. He's not supposed to be. Concert. What did he ask me? Yes. When he did the Tarantino roast. Yes. Howard Stern got up and left before he got on and before Jerry Lewis got on. The next day, Stern goes on the air and said, "Pat Cooper bomb." Well, there's pictures of Uma Hunger and Samuel L. Jackson and Tarantino laughing their ass off, and I got Tarantino. I recorded him on my little camera. Saying how great he was. So Pat goes to Sirius to do the Jay Thomas show. He writes on the wall, Stern, you lie. Uh, oh, that, that big wall they have when you walk in. How are they yeah. going to know that you're here? Can you no, get no, it? No, no, get, no, no. Well, well, that's that. Well, uh, well, uh, well uh, we're going to edit this out. No, but I mean, why don't you sit down? <laughs> He's confusing me. I thought there was something wrong with the lights. <laughs> what did you ask? He's on. He's off. This, this part would be. <laughs> Okay, we are now. I'll yeah. Send you I'll send you the pictures. I'll send you the pictures with, with Uma. But so he goes on, and then he co- he does Marley's show six weeks later. Right. And he says, I want to see if it's still on the wall. So we walk out there, and it's still on the wall. So Steve, who was the head of the Howard Stern Net News Network, he's not there anymore. Um, he comes oh, uh, Steve, what's his name? Steve Langford. 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 Huh? Comes out, Steve Langford, he's talking about. And he says to Pat, Howard, because Howard never comes in the front door. So he goes, Howard saw this today. It's getting painted tonight. So we were cracking up. Then we got booked again. He got booked again for Jackie's show. Howard threatened to fire Jackie. That, that's how vindictive he is. That's how vindictive he so is. Jackie's yeah. my friend. He called me. He goes, Steve, you got to do me a favor. Call Pat and tell him not to come. This is a half hour before he's supposed wow. to come. Wow. So I call. I go, all right, call you back. Pat, don't do the show. Jackie's, you know, whatever. I got to tell him what happens. So Jackie calls me back. He goes, he promotes it all day long, and then he fucking has Gary tell me he's going to fire me. He goes, he's such an asshole. I said, all right, we don't want to hurt you, so we're not going to do it. So we didn't he's afraid it. to put me on. That's so what he should have done if he had a brain. Say, come on this show and tell me that to my face. I said, I've been talking to your face all day. But he screamed. I don't want him on my show no more. Great radio. I said, that sucks. That goes to show that, well, that how- if he don't win, he don't want to know. You're nice. You're full of shit. And everybody was so scared of this guy. He had bigger names than me. They were scared of him. I said, well, you're a bully. That's what you are. Then he turned around and he's telling me, well, uh, you know, you, 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 what did I do to you? I said, you're not an honest man. You double-crossed your fan base. Now they got to pay $12 to hear me when they could get it for nothing and hearing you. So cut the shit. Then don't tell me all of a sudden you went to your daughters. You want to say you didn't like that. You're sorry that you were Howard Stern. Who are you now? I said, then the funny part of it, his dog died and made national fucking history. So I got on the air. Your dog died. When the fuck did you have a dog? I said, where do you get all the accolades? Howard Stern's dog died. I said, you're a dickhead. He moved, to, he moved out to the Hamptons. Now I'm going to the Hamptons. Where you going to the Hamptons? Everybody go to the Hamptons. I said, you dumb son of a bitch. I said, you built a house on the Hamptons. And when I kill him, I go to the Hamptons. And you, you, know, this, you know how it has no, he has no sense of humor when it comes to that. Oh, like, he's got a sense of humor when there's money. Right. When I, when I saw him on that show, I, 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 and then somebody interviewed me. I said, here's a man with no talent making $50 million a year. Have you watched year. him on that new show? What's it no called? Ta- huh? the, what's it? America's Got Talent? Have, have you watched Howard on that show? I watched it once and I said, it's a professional amateur show. What they're doing to these young people is abusing these people. And it's a terrible scenario. He's getting $50 million. I hope he got $100 million. He don't deserve it. He's not talented. He happens to be a fucking bully. And that's what he represents. But he's trying to get... 
Chevy Chase, he threatened Chevy Chase on the radio. You talk about it in the book. Yeah, that, that, I'll fucking yeah. kill you. I'll destroy you. He invites Chevy Chase to his now, fucking wedding. Now they're best friends. No, I don't think anymore. I just think that, you know, Chevy, I don't know. I couldn't believe Chevy Chase and him got close. Nobody, nobody stood up to this man. Except you. You really did. But I stood up to him on the air to his face, and I wasn't trying to hurt. I was trying to say, oh, wait a minute, what's the matter with you? Sam, it's, you know, oh, he went Sam, what's his name? Sam, Sam Kennison. Sam Kennison. Yeah, I says, he's your hero. I hope he marries your daughter. Yeah, that's right. Anyway. You say that in the book, too. Yes. I, I said, yeah. I don't know. What, what the fuck is Sam Kennison? When did he walk on, on water? I said, he's not even in my fucking league. But, you know, I like Sam because Sam had a nice way pumping. He was well, all Sam, right. Well, Sam was similar to you. And Sam Kennison, God rest his soul, was very similar to your brand of comedy. He was an evangelist with comedy. That's yeah, how I yeah, looked at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Told it like it is, and it got him in trouble the same way he got you in trouble. But he was smoking, you know, broccoli up. You don't smoke broccoli He was just self-destructive. You weren't self-destructive. Huh? You just were honest. You, you, I mean, you, you're still here, and Sam's long gone, and that's the difference. Jerry Lewis. You got Jerry Lewis to write the foreword in the book. Jerry Lewis, I tell you, you got to understand, I feel like a, like a kid with, with a brand new toy. I saw all these entertainers at the Paramount, the Strand, all the vaudeville shit I saw. And for these people to acknowledge me and come to my house in Vegas, oh, this will kill you. So I turn around and, you know, I worked with all the um, opening and actors. So I, I didn't look it up. I was making fucking money, twenty five, thirty thousand a week as an opening act. I says... So I, they said, how come you didn't make movies? Fuck the movies. I'm standing here making 30000 working with Sinatra, working with all these guys. And they go, I don't want that. I, make a, I never saw this kind of money. I never saw this kind of money. But you were, you were hanging out with Frank Sinatra, Joey Bishop. And, and by the way, Andy Williams died today. I know that. Do you know Andy Williams? I worked with him. How do you feel about the death of Andy Williams? How do I feel about what? The death of Andy Williams. He's one of a kind. And uh, I hate to say this, you know what I remember about Andy Williams? When he went to bat for his wife. When she was, well. She shot, she shot her boyfriend, right. right? And I said, that's a man's man. In Aspen, Colorado, she shot that's her boyfriend. That's a man's man. Yeah. And you know, you look at something like that, and it didn't destroy him. He went on to sing and still make great records. He was one of a kind. He was Andy Williams. Nobody looked like him. Same with Perry Coleman, Sinatra, and all these guys. Jerry Bell. I worked with I worked with Lou Montes. I worked with guys you know, that that never made it big. Right. See, big, but I big. was an opening act, and that's a kill you. I buy my wife for Christmas a Rolls Royce. Now that you was were making the that era, kind of dough back then. But that was. Right. The era when cars were not selling, and I got a deal for it. Guy from Texas, it's a brand new, give me 30000 I sent him a check. That's Christmas, a lot of money back then. I'm serious. Give me a check, 30000 Well, they weren't selling cars. I right. grabbed it. They shit. Have, you know, fucking wife calls me. You mother shit bastard. Show off, son of a bitch. <laughs> I said, what is your problem, Rita? What is your problem, <laughs> Rita? You had a fucking car you bought, and you're not there. I said, why don't your husband buy it? He's a closing act. I don't see a fucking Rolls Royce in your car. And who the fuck you think you're talking to, your mother? I don't give a shit. And then Jerry calls me, you know, you're going to put me in a big fucking bad shape. What is it? Sing Mala Van Miller. Sing fucking Mala Van Miller. Who gives a shit? That's my Rolls Royce. If you piss me off, I said, get another one. So he had to buy a Rolls Royce. No, he had to buy, I'm sorry. So he winds up buying a used Mercedes. All right? And every time I go by, my wife, I said, go, go by there. Ring the horn. I said, I never had a Rolls Royce. Sergio Frankie had 12 of them, who I loved dearly. He was my, one of my who? best friends. Sergio Frankie. I mean, he was, we, worked, we went on tour. Okay. He never made like it as big of a Bob Hope or anything or as big as a... Do you know what Jackie Mason told me once? Uh, I don't he know spoke how, to you? I, he did. You're well, kidding me. I'm going to ask you about Jackie Mason in a second, but this is what Jackie Mason said to me. He said, Chauncey, there are people in show business who make $300,000 a year that are considered failures. And every year they bring home $300,000. What job can you make $300,000 a year and be considered a failure? That's right. He's right. But what's something wrong with him too? Tell I me about Jackie Mason. Year. I worked with him a year. Did he drive you me crazy? You couldn't get a ticket. Now I give it to you, the coup de gras. We're making money with packaging, 
Pat Cooper and Jackie Mason, and he'll not deny it. He was working in Florida, couldn't get work. He was having problems with his career. Yeah. I was doing good, you know, working at condos. I'm doing everything. And finally he says to me, and he said it, you know, we should get together. We should have a team, the Italian and the Jew. <laughs> that's and a great, I said, see, that's a great idea. My out to God. I said, okay, what do you want to do? He said, well, we'll, take, we'll turn around, we'll get some lines <laughs> together, we'll do this, she'll do that. Fine. And we go over to Madison Square Garden as a benefit. Right. right. Okay? Mm -hmm. The small Madison Square yeah, Garden, yeah. not the 18th. The form, down. the form. That's the, the form. That, anyway. Yeah. So he goes, listen. So we, did. we never worked together yet. He goes, what do you think we should do? I don't know. I said, listen, listen to me. Calm down. You go on first and you're pissed. Mm -hmm. Why am I pissed? Tell me why I'm pissed. Because you don't like me to go on with you. Because I'm going to follow you. You don't like that. And we'll start anything. What's that going to lead to? What the fuck is the difference? It's a benefit. We'll do six minutes. Right. And we started to, and people liked it. Right. And we started to get bookings. As and a team, making, as a team. Huh? As a team. And we're making money. So here's what we did. When I opened the show, right, he'd come on and say, I don't mean to bother you, but you're doing too much time. When the fuck do I come on? <laughs> and we, it started to work. Now, Mr. Mason, the fucking genius. We're working <laughs> Westbury. You can't get a, you can't get a ticket. You can't get a ticket. That Sunday, the New, the New York Times, Jackie Mason at Rodney Dangerfields. I says, are you out of your fucking mind? You're going to Rodney, we're getting $40,000 here. You're going to Rodney on a Monday in the fucking paper. Who comes back? The owner, Lee Goober. You Jew son of a bitch bastard, I'll fucking kill you. What gives you the right to tell me where I come work on a Monday or Tuesday? You're getting eight fucking dollars tomorrow. You're getting four <laughs> fucking pounds with your partner. I don't give a shit what you think. Don't tell me what to do. I'll do and fuck and cock. And we go there Monday. We go there Monday. There's nine people, ten people in the fucking audience. He comes out and goes, Dad, don't tell me where the people know what the fuck he's talking about. Here. <laughs> That's when I call him the miracle man. He disappears. Next thing, he's working in California. He's making the brothers something, brothers there. He's on the Simpsons. <clears throat> the, 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 huh? the Simpsons, the cartoon show. No, no, no. Forget go ahead, that. Go ahead. I'm talking when he started to happen and they put him on Broadway. Right. <clears throat> and the guy that put him on Broadway, all of a sudden, he's packing him. God bless him. But I'm your mind. I'm going, look at me. Schmuck, I got to leave him. He's on Broadway. I'm working a fucking corner. It's so, a typical Pat Cooper story, though. Always the victim. Like, always. No, but. But. Yeah. No loyalty. The guy yeah. that put him on Broadway the first time, he don't need him no more. He goes back on the second time without him. But isn't that showbiz? Isn't that what showbiz is? I would never do that. I would kill is, myself. Is there loyalty in show business? Not just your career, yeah. but any career. You've been doing this a long time. People are shitheads. People will do anything to fuck the other person to get ahead, right? So he wrote a book. Say, he right. knows. Say, he would tell me I'm a genius. Right. But not in front of anybody. He said, I can't believe you off the top of your head. He saw me do roast at the fries. He said, I can't believe your fucking mind. You're one of the best roast, roasters right. of all time. Right. What, right. what, what is the key, the secret? To he being wouldn't a, do it. Why? He's a, because he's scared shit. Because it takes the talent. It takes I the real saw, skill. Listen, I love Don Rickles more than like I love anybody. And I think he's one of the great. Yeah. Don Rickles wasn't funny at the fucking roast when he, when, when he emceed for Bob Newhart. I closed that fucking roast. You I closed Richard Pryor's roast. Unbelievable. George you're, you're, Willis. I mean, what's his name? Uh, Willis, uh, the actor. I did him. Bruce Willis. I did him you all. You did Bruce Willis. So, but what is his, the, what's the key? What's the, the key? key? Yeah. You, what's yeah, the I'm secret to being good key. at roasting? What, tell give me. It tell key. me. Very easy. Tell me. Everybody came on with paper. And then I said to Jeff, I said, I, I walked up. They're going, what is this stick bass going to do? Yeah. Off the top. My secret is, I know what they're going to call. The first guy that says fuck gets the biggest laugh. Right. I'm fucking tired of being ah, man. Everybody's saying, fuck, oh, fuck, I'm all fuck. But nobody's saying nothing. I turn around, say, say, say we're doing George Willis. Right. Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis, yes. Okay? I may not even mention him. 
I say, no, bros, fuck you. You're not that important. I want to you know, get on my fucking nerves. I would do this. And, right. it, and they're going, when did you write this? I said, I never wrote it. Because they're trying to find an edge. These comics. How right. could you? I says, I don't do it. It's called fucking talent. Do you know what talent Just is? Just being funny. Being able to go up there and be funny. This man seen me work. I don't think he seen me work the same time, twice. You know, I got both. I can hear. Listen to this. I don't remember. And people say, what's the matter? I say, I can't remember. I don't know what it is. I really can't remember. I go on the stage. I don't know. I walk off after an hour and then I go, what did I do? I don't remember. But I got a flow because people oh. are sitting there going, you. And I'm saying, what the fuck? They're laughing because I don't hear that good. Pat, but you, but you, you know do, something? I got the balls to go on. You do remember because it's amazing how much you remember in this book. But I wasn't, listen to me, I wasn't 83. What were you when you wrote this book? 82? <laughs> the only man. What, that did I you lose your memory of, this past year? You know something, Chauncey? <laughs> yes. I don't hear anybody admitting that they're old. You know, they go, well, you know, I say, you fucking got one foot in the grave. What are you breaking balls for? They say, well, you know, you're a big macho. But I'm old. The minute I walk on the stage, he'll tell you. I walk on stage and I'm on all. I'm old. That's what the fuck. But everybody can, everybody can relate to you still. Huh? At your age, how many comics can be your age and fill a room of any age, any demographic? You can do that. There aren't many well, that can do that. Because I happen to have a different personality that Robert these Klein. guys don't have. Robert Klein can't do it. Robert, I just worked with him. It's yeah. a wonderful. But he man. can't do what he can't do what you he can closed. do. Can't do what you can do. He closed. I didn't get insulted. He said, listen, here's a man had 12 home box shows. Right. He's been in movies more than me. But, and I don't say that disrespectful. I think he believes it. It's fucking over. It's over. His, his comedy is dating. Why would he want to close? comedy is dating. Why would he want to close? Uh, only you would say that. What, what was the hardest chapter in this book for you to write? The most difficult part of this book to talk about? Well, I told the, I, I told the truth about my family. Yeah. And um, I, I, this could have been avoided. I, they buried my mother. I never went to the funeral. They buried my father. You know what they wrote when my father died? Michael Caputo left three daughters. Did not even mention. That's motherfuckers. To put that, how do you do that to me? You don't like me, why? And my sister calls me, daddy died and left 800 or 300,000, but uh, you can't touch it. I said, if I wanted it, there's no will there. But I wouldn't take money off when money was alive. Why would I took? Now, can you imagine they both died? I never went to the funeral. I said, I haven't seen him in 40 fucking years. It's still um, but I felt terrible. Of course I did. Yeah. It still bothers you to this day. Like, still sticks with you. What is wrong if I say I don't like my mother and I don't like my father? Who gives a shit? All of a sudden, my family, if you look on the Amazon, they're writing letters about me. I'm a piece of shit. I'm the, it's 50 years. When are you going to get a life? Your daughter hasn't <clears throat> gotten over any of this stuff yet. Well, is there still her, animosity? I can understand. You know why? I saw her twice in my life. And let me tell you, this is a story. Let me tell you this. Her lawyer calls me and says, would you pay for your daughter's college? College. A great part of the book. <clears throat> is that in there? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I said yes. Yeah. But when you walk in the room and pass me and say to your lawyer, is he going to do my, my college? No, and thank turn you. turn around, don't say hello to me. I said to the lawyer, I don't give a fuck. I ain't taking that shit. He apologized. I gave him $100 for his that, fucking time. That's a great story. But it's not a story that's stupid. Yeah. She's a school teacher and got no common sense. You understand you me? You can pay for my college and I thank you. Listen to me. Anybody would. Anybody Chauncey, would. Yeah. It's not right to bust my balls 50 years. My yeah. son wrote a book. Did right. you know that? I know that. All right. Now he's going to do something and, and, and he's gay. You know, okay, that's fine. That, you know, he wants to be noticed. He went out to bat for, uh, for John Travolta, right. was on the front page. And I'm saying, they don't know that they're doing, they have no rhythm in, the, in their life. And is it the money? It's 50 years. What are you going to get the money? You're going to sue me when I die? Take this shit. Who, let me ask you, this is, this is a question that we're not going to read in the book, but who does get the money when you die? Like, who's in your will? Well, who's my, who's going to make, who's my gonna, daughter? Your from my first marriage. She's going to And my two grandkids. I got a granddaughter, 17 and one 16. I'm going to give them everything. Good for you. And now, I, let I, me I, explain something to you yeah. one second. Don't think, you know, I'm not, I'm, 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 
I figured I should give my other family money. Of course. Okay? I said, all right, listen. You know what my lawyer said? Stop. Mm -hmm. Because if you tell them you want to give them two, three hundred thousand apiece, they're going to come out and think you got more. If you leave them five dollars, let them fight and find out what you got. I says, really? He said, Pat, I'm telling you. Your daughter, when you're dead, is going to have a fucking fight with these people? Fuck them. <laughs> I says, you're right. So my lawyer said, well, my, you know, my, the one that made the will, what is it? Forget it. Leave him $30. And I felt bad because I said, Jesus Christ, I could do everything for them. My mother, I could have done everything for them. But you know something? Why would, why would a mother call up Howard Stern to embarrass me? For what fucking reason? What reason? Why didn't she call me if she's busting her balls and say something to me? And I said this in the book. was the greatest ad lib I ever heard in my life by my father when my mother yelled at him, and he come out with the marriage license. Where does it say on this license I gotta take your shit? When I heard that from my father, I said, what a fuck, and I never heard something great like that. <laughs> and he said, and when she bought the house, right. she bought the house, he said, I don't want nothing. No bigger house or shit. I wanna work a five a day, and she unbeneath, quiet, under the curtain, saving money, she buys a brownstone, and he finds out. This was great, great drama. And he comes home. Yes. He always shook his head. That's why we never served him soup. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he turns around and he goes, Well, my darling wife, <laughs> it's a so wonderful I hear now that you bought a house. And she don't know what to say. He said, Now that you bought a house, <laughs> next time you want to fuck, I'll fuck your house. And he left. <laughs> Never came back. Lived at the Hotel St. George 37 years Are later. He died. Hey, fire, bang, ghoul, he went. <laughs> That's what he did. So when I tell this in the book, and people say, well, you shouldn't talk about your Fuck it, I got to hope I got to talk about <laughs> Well, you shouldn't say that. He said that. But why are you opening your mouth? I lived the life. They don't want to hear me say, guess who I laid last week? Guess how much sex I had the other day? Bullshit. So they say, how's your sex life? I got a, like, I tell the audience, I'm fucking dead. I got erectional dysfunction. What the hey, fuck you want? Jack Nicholson said once <clears throat> the greatest day of his life was when he stopped who? getting up. Jack, Nich Jack Nicholson. Jack who? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Jack Nicholson, the actor. You know, what did he say? He said, the greatest moment of my life was, was the day I stopped getting erections because I stopped getting in trouble. I never had trouble with that. My sex <laughs> life is boring. I don't, I don't know. You've I been around a lot of to Italy. I paid her. I paid her. And one day she says to me, how are I appealing? I said, bananas are appealing. I says, <laughs> I says, you think I took you to Italy to get in your pants? Are you fucking nuts? And she didn't talk to me. I'm getting drunk with the fucking maitre d'. I'm tipping him and he's drinking my fucking wine. And I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying I don't believe you people. She goes, you know, uh, what do you want me to do? I'm fucking dead. She got insulting. Then I get accused of screwing her when I, my wife was alive, which was such a lie. And then I'm said, then my daughter believed it. I says, you're stupid. You believe that I would take her to Italy? Wouldn't I tell you she's my girlfriend? Right. I said, she goes, what the? and the lady that I took to Italy gets to my daughter. You think that I would do this? I would spit in his face if he ever came to me while he was married. Don't you do that. Your husband's a, I mean, your father's a gentleman. He took care of me. It's me that I got him a little bit annoyed because I have no sense of humor. I took her on the, uh, on the uh, Stern show. She says, I never believe I'm going to be on. And, uh, and I was nice. I never got in her pants. I never got in my pants. I never did that. I never said, geez, I want to fucking like nail her. I you were a good looking her. guy when you well, were. I'm good looking. I'm cute. I used to you never like, was you know you know, you know who you remind me of when you were younger? Buddy Holly. Huh? Buddy Holly. Buddy Holly? You look like Buddy Holly a little no, bit. No, because of the glasses look yeah. like Buddy Holly. Yeah. I don't know. Listen to me. I've had, I'll tell you why. I could write a book about my sex life when I was a cab driver. <laughs> I could tell you about people from the UN that, that their husbands from some Arab country went home a day earlier, okay? And they wanted me to teach him how to play strip poker. And I says, and I was about 23 driving a car. I was skinny as a rail. I had a pee cap on. And I took them up to their apartment. And I had sex like you wouldn't believe. I walked out with a limp. Really? Because they never, never 
can do what we do here in Saudi Arabia, one of those countries. If you turn around and have oral sex, they kill you. They shoot you. Right. So these two women says, you know, so naturally I, I made like they were always losing. <laughs> I think in 20 minutes, the two of them were balls naked. <laughs> and you know, you want to see hair. This was brittle pairs from the top. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. And when I told them about, I says, did, did you ever go with trim? You like trim? She goes, well, we sew a lot in there. What? Fucking sew. <laughs> it's trim. It's your poopoo. -poo. It's your poop. It's your, it's your, it's your vaso. What have you? She goes, oh, Mr. Cooper, you're so wonderful. They're both balls naked. <laughs> Sitting there. And I got more of my clothes, most of my clothes on. They gave me $200. I says, wow, 200 Like a gigolo. No, but they, if you, I was a kid. I told this to my friends, oh, you're full of shit. And I <laughs> says, I had more women that were sad that were you want to cry. Because I'm, I'm a pushover. And I said, oh, she said, Mama Scott, kid, would you go through the park again? I don't have enough money. I, know I'm, I don't want to go home. I, I'm, I'm going, sure, sure, lady. Here's a fucking. Because I looked at the good things that I used to get from the cab. So it didn't bother me. I'd take her around the park. She goes, would you come in the back and kiss me? I ain't coming in your back and kiss me. Well, where am I going to park in the fucking park? And I'm here. The fucking horses with the carriage come in. And that was a good horse. No, and next thing I know. That was actually having, brilliant. I'm having sex. I never saw her after that. She hugged me. She said, thank you. And I'm in there watching the squirrels going across. I'm going, nobody believes this. <laughs> she gave me, I think it was a hundred dollars. I mean, uh, I said, Jesus. So people Christ. pay you for sex, it sounds like. No, you got because, paid for sex as a no, young man. No, because Everyone I keeps giving you money. People gave you $200, give you a hundred dollars. Let me tell you how bad I am. Yeah. I get, once in a while, I get a woman to clean my place because yeah. I do a pretty good job. When I, I don't know them, I leave the door open and I leave. Because my luck, they're liable to say I did something wrong. Right. Once I know that, that, that they know me and I treat them good, I have no problem. I got a woman in, in Florida from uh, Columbia. Me te culpa, I love Jew. I said, you love Jews? No, 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 I don't love Jews. I love Jew. I said, why don't you love Jews? I don't love Jews. I love Jew. She goes, you're so good to me. I give money to my grandchild. Wonderful people. So I'm not looking. So my buddy goes, hit her, hit her. She looks like she's ready. Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> I'm fucking dead. But they have, they have things for that. To oh, oh, you want to discuss that? If you got a minute. You want to discuss that? Do you, do you, um, do you take Cialis? You I tried it all. Viagra? But you have to have a girl. Do you have a girl? You can get a girl. You're a good looking I'm man. I'm going to say to you again, I tried it all. Yeah. I, did you ever try Torpedo Larry? No. Right. I don't know what that is. This is called Gek. They put it under here. The right. Arab people. Right. Gek. That, I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah. And you leave it there. Right. And you can do whatever you want with a woman. You're kidding. I put it there and I got an infection in my gums. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shitting you. Because this guy You put something under your lip to get an erection. No. It's about erection. This guy said, you have woman begging that. I, I got an affection. I could, I'm just chewing them. So what the hell I had a hole in there. Guy said, what are you doing? It's like tobacco when you chew it. Right, right. And my doctor said, what are you eating? I says, I don't know. The guy says, gag. He said, you fucking crazy. <laughs> and then you need a woman. And I don't like to go, all right, look, all right you want to go now? I want to take a girl out. You like to woo. That's where I came from. You show her the respect. Not and the groupies. You, no, I swear to you, I may be old fashioned, but I like doing that. I like taking a girl out and you know, she goes, Chip, you take me to nicest places. And I mean, it's nice. Then you work to try to get to her sexually. You know, you know, that's the way you, you just don't wait today. You want to, baby, want to get it on. Get what on? Want to get it on? Get it on. What? I got laid four so you, times last So when night. you were a comedian working in Vegas, when you were a young man, you didn't have one night stands, you didn't go but out. I, got, I had women in the band, violin player, I was married. And they would say, Mr. Cooper, you want one over here. Can I sit in your room? I said, no. Really? No. So you were always gentlemen. Well, because what if I, they're gonna say, hey, just attack me, what the fuck do I know? I stay away. I don't look for trouble. And even now- If someone doesn't look for trouble, you seem to find quite a bit. Listen, there's a couple of women in my life, I'd say, gee, I wish I could get a heart on. I would like to make her with her. I don't even think about it no more. It's over. Forget it. <laughs> well, Pat, it's one thing that's not over is your career. You're doing great. The book is great. <clears throat> how do you, you want people to remember you? When you're long gone, 100 years from now, how do you want people to remember Pat Cooper? Well, I hope I'm one of a kind, and that's not ego talking. I don't want to be say, you know, it reminds me of Milton Berle, who I loved. You know, it reminds me. See, I learned from the Jewish comics mm -hmm. when I was growing up. I said, why are they different? Why, what, what's missing here that I, and I found out they had a rhythm. 
they had a way of, and they had their own personality. So I had to do that. If I want to tell stories, tell it the way who you are. Don't try to be Milton Berle. Don't try to be Henny Youngman. And they were all great. I, I mean, I looked up, and then they were in my house years later. But I like, I like, I'd like to be remembered that I really, really missed my first grandkids. That I want the people to know that I, because they say I'm a dog, I, I'll never see them. So I'm saying, I, because I could have done maybe something for them. Not that I want to give them the, for, for their affection. And I want, but I want them to say, you know something? I don't like my mother. I don't like my grandkids. But I'm ashamed to say that. I was not ashamed of what I did to my first family because I did nothing but help myself to get out of there because if I didn't, I wouldn't be sitting here and I wouldn't be in show business. And I made a lot of money because I worked. I didn't turn nothing down. I worked. All of a sudden, they say, hey, you're a movie star. We saw you in Idol as this. You should have done 20 years ago. I don't want to. I'm a comic. I don't want to go, Nick, boop, ek, ek, action. I don't <laughs> want that. I'm happy. 25, 30,000. What am I looking for? What am I looking for? Why well, you make it be a movie star? I'm fine. I'm fine. And you're also one of a kind. The book is called Pat Cooper, How Dare You Say, How Dare Me. Great book. And uh, Pat, you also have some appearances. Oh my God. Where are you gonna, you're gonna be at the Bogota. You know, how can you complain about anything? You're gonna be at the Bogota in Atlantic City on October 26th. It's, it's been open 20 years. They you're, just decided it's that It's like I'm the funny. hottest club in Atlantic City. Huh? It's the biggest club in Atlantic City. You're gonna be at the Bogota on October 26th. Yeah, but I'm- You have you, nothing you, to complain you, about. You wanna hear this? Yeah. You wanna hear this? I get a call from, you know, Mr. Cooper, yes, we'd like to use you. I said, well, that's very nice. But you know, we're looking for a younger audience. I said, let's kill your mother. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said. How dare you say you can't, I can't make a living at 100 years old? George Burns was shot as a jack. For anybody should have yeah. the right to make a that's living. That's right. So when I said that, because the young guy really didn't know me, what I do, and didn't understand my humor. Because right. I didn't say, now I, you know, I'm not putting any comics down, but they are now doing comedy about what comes out of your body, right. which I don't think is funny, but they got audiences paying top dollar to see them. So I said, God bless them. Right. And that's it. And that's gonna go away eventually, and the next generation gonna want a different thing. My music I miss because I can't hear. But I missed it. I worked with Sinatra. It was one of the greats. And you saw the story I wrote about him. Johnny right. Carson, he peed on my leg. People says, well, he's Johnny Carson. Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck him, I said. And he said to me, I'm Johnny Carson. I said, what are you? I don't give a shit if you kick Carson. I said, you're peeing on my leg. I had to go, oh, I was living on Western Dam. I had to go home and change my clothes for this bastard. He literally Not a it. nice man. Johnny Carson Not a nice literally man. peed huh? on your leg. I can't answer. Johnny Carson peed, uh, uh, Jill, literally so Jilly, peed on your kid. Jilly comes in and goes, what's the problem? That's a son of a bitch. He goes, oh, geez, that's Johnny Carson. Fuck him. What, are you crazy? Why Johnny did he pee Carson. on your leg? Uh, there's a story about Carson. I don't know if, if you know that. He was he was talking to a woman and she, she was making fun of him. And he was talking to a woman and she was married to a maid guy. And they beat him up. They pushed him down the stairs and they beat him up in some cellar. Jolly? Yeah. He was not a nice man, but on that show, he was great. No question about it. But you took him out of that light, he was the worst man in the world. Something wrong with him. But, well, I mean, when, when he peed on my leg, he lived in New York, him and Ed, Ed McMahon. And Ed McMahon was with him 30 years, and he said it. I only went over Johnny's house once, and he never talked to me while I was there. And you would think he'd be the closest of anyone. He's don't have, he don't have a heart. He's a heartless fucking man. And he can't help it. That's it. He's a prick, and he'll was die a prick, and nobody gives a shit. And how dare he not give something, but he did when he died. He left money, I think, to uh, Nebraska, to some school or anything. Why not do it when you're alive? And, you know, but the minute the curtain closed, same with Dean Martin, who oh, I love Dean Martin, but the minute the curtain closed, don't talk to him, don't bust his balls. That's the way he is, and that's even before his son died. That was his DNA, right. you know. He was like old-fashioned Italian. He was a good-looking son of a bitch. Of course, they fi guess who fixed his nose? Who? Lou Costello. Lou Costello? Hello. <laughs> See what you mind here. Yeah. How did Lou Costello fix his nose? Lou Costello, yes, because he had a fazool. I saw a fazool he had. I saw him at the Lowy State when he was the next to end attraction, Dean Martin. 
I wish you could get a picture with that he had on the Same with Vic Namone. Why shouldn't you be the same you had a nose job? Vic Namone had a dip, but he had, had a, a big butt. parrot hook nose. What's the fucking difference? <laughs> Can you breathe? No, they fix it here. Now the guy can't breathe. He's going. <laughs> so what the hell's it do? You know, big noses means handsome too. Really? I mean, I, Quasimodo. You have a little nose. <laughs> I, I have a big nose. Did you see the hunchback of Notre Dame? Absolutely. That told it all. When Maureen O'Hara, who was gorgeous, fell in fell love with love the, the hunchback. hunchback. Notre Dame. So that tells you, everybody's handsome. There's hope for every man. No matter no, what no, you no, look no, like, no, not everybody. No, no, no. There's no hope for Stern. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, Pat, it, it has been a pleasure to have you on the show. No, Again, thank you. the book is called How Dare You Say, How Dare Me. Thank you. Great book. You got to get it. Pat, you've been George, great. You're a gentleman. Thank you. Uh, thank you for thank coming you. on. We'll be back next be $7. week. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Cooper, everybody. We'll be back next week. Thank you. <laughs>